Hello, my name is Adam Shining Pokraso. I'm a creative professional working in San Francisco. I'm here to talk to you about building your personal brand and your portfolio. A portfolio is an important component of marketing yourself to potential employers, clients, or schools. No matter what field you're in, law, science, or math, or even art and design, embracing this sense of design and personal brand is really important when it comes to marketing yourself and getting out there. We're going to start by talking about the core component of your portfolio, which is the logo. Here we have two logos, one for Marco Bruce and the other for Kelly Brandt. Kelly Brandt is a biology student whose research is about killer whales. She's entering her final year of school and she's thinking about continuing her schooling or finding a potential employer. Marco Bruce is a design school student focusing on photography. His interests are in nature and wildlife. He's also in his final year of school and looking for a potential employer. So here we have the finished logo for Marco Bruce and Kelly Brandt in Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a great tool for creating logos, but it begins with brainstorming. Brainstorming is all about just dumping your ideas onto a piece of paper, onto a whiteboard, or even using touch apps like Adobe Ideas. We've got a couple of sketches here from Marco Bruce. He was thinking a little bit about photography and incorporating his name into his logo, so using the letter B. With Kelly Brantz, she was thinking more about using symbols from science, like the double helix or the infinity symbol. She eventually took a photograph of this piece of paper. It's an infinity ribbon. We'll go ahead and use this infinity ribbon photo as inspiration for the first exercise. These assets are available for download if you'd like to follow along, but I encourage you to use your own visual representation for your own logo. Let's get started. You can start by double-clicking the Kelly Brandt logo start.ai. It will open in Adobe Illustrator. Here we have the sketch, which will inspire the first part, redrawing this thing using the pen tool. First begin by creating a new layer over here on the Layers menu. At the bottom of this menu, you have the Create New Layer button. Select it using your mouse. That will create a new empty layer. Then move over to the left-hand side of your screen and find the pen tool. Select the pen tool with your mouse. Then use the pen tool to create your first anchor point. You'll begin by creating a little trace line, clicking once to create a straight line, and then clicking and dragging to create curved lines. I'm going to go ahead and cruise through this a little bit by creating a couple of different curved paths. Once I have a few anchor points, the shape will begin to take form you have to come all the way back to the original anchor point to close the shape. And there we have our first vector path. You can select any of these individual anchor points to modify them or remove them using the direct selection tool. Notice how I might want to remove this one or reshape this one to make it a little bit more curved. The completed traced image is found on layer 4. Notice that I'll turn off layer 2 and layer 5, the new layer that I created, and then turn on layer 4. Here's an example of the finished sketch with some simple modifications like rotation and resizing. The next thing you'll want to do is get the text tool to add a new layer of text. Again, you'll want to create a new layer by using the New Layer button at the bottom of the layer panel. Select New Layer. Then use your text tool to type on Kelly Brandt's name. All right, so there we have Kelly Brandt. On another line, I'll type biology student. At this point, the text is really small, so we're going to want to resize this. You can do this by selecting the whole layer or by selecting the individual lines of text, and then go to the top toolbar where you're going to find the 12-point type. Let's make that a lot bigger. Say 48-point? That's getting closer. So we've created a new text layer. There's all kinds of ways that you can modify this text layer, recentering it, resizing it. You can also change the font. I'll go over here to the font menu and select the pull down. Notice there are loads of fonts in there. I'm going to select Palantino Linotype. The logo is beginning to take form and I think it looks pretty good. The important things to consider here are making a unique and memorable logo but keeping it simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the type layer as well as the shape layer. First I'll select layer 6, the type layer. Selecting a layer can be done by clicking the target button on the right hand side of the layer panel. You can also select individual lines or individual letters of text by using your type tool. With the Kelly Brandt line of text selected, move your mouse to the top tool panel on the right hand side, the color panel. Then select a color such as, mm, I'm thinking a purplish red, 
maybe like a maroon color. I can also select the next two lines of text and change the color for those as well. Maybe say a blue of sorts. Colors are really an important thing to consider in building your logo and thinking about your brand. With these two colors selected, they kind of complement each other, but you may want to refine it a little bit as well. Now that I have the text recolored, I'm going to recolor the shape. Here under layer 4, you can expand layer 4 and locate the group. Inside of the group, you have individual paths, which can be selected individually, or you can select the whole group as one. I'm going to select one individual path and then go to the color panel on the right hand side. So then I select a light blue. Once I've changed the color for one path, I'm going to move my mouse to the window menu on the top toolbar and select the color guide panel. The color guide is a great tool to allow you to sample one color and find other complementary colors. Once I've colored the first path, I'll go to the color guide to create complementary colors for the other paths. Then I'm going to return to the layer menu and see what the finished piece looks like. Here I have the finished logo that I created earlier. There's a lot of things you can do to modify this and make it simple but memorable. I've also gone ahead and created a four panel version of this logo which allows us to display it on different backgrounds or using different color specifications. In the next video, you'll learn all about creating a business card, another extension of building your personal brand and portfolio. Thanks for watching.